Welcome back to my channel. So for those who are new here, my name is Nicole. I'm now a third year teacher and we are getting started on the second part of our school year. So we just got back from winter break and the kids are anxious, they're rambunctious, they're all of the things, but I miss them so stinking much. But for today's adventure, I'm gonna take y'all along with me of how I lesson plan, what goes behind the scenes of getting everything done and planned as a teacher. Now. I would normally be doing this during my conference period when we get the conference periods. However, I don't like recording during the school day. So I am after the bell rings. I am here. We're ready to go. It's kids are gone. And so we're going to lesson plan together. So if that's something you want to see, then just keep watching. Okay. So I did go ahead and make a to-do list just because that's one of my favorite things in the whole entire world to do. So my to-do list is doing my science lesson plans for the 16th and 19th through the 19th, I need to do my weekly slides and then I need to make bundles of my copies because normally the front office, if I put it into an advance amount of time, they'll actually make the copies for me as long as I just tell them what I need. So I'll just bundle them together and give it to them on Monday since they're probably already gone by now. But the nice thing about my campus is we have our second grade team. And we have enough teachers to where we can assign teachers to specific subjects. So I, we have a teacher that does grammar. We have a teacher that plans for ELAR, a teacher to plan for math, a teacher to plan for science, social studies, does homework. And for this unit, we're talking about patterns and weather. We're talking about weather tools, um, forecast, and then we're talking about moon phases. So that's what we're talking about. But for the week that I'm planning for, we are going to be focusing on precipitation, wind socks and wind vanes, and cloud slash cloud coverage. So what I do is I print out a calendar based off of the third nine weeks because how we do it at our campus is we have to split the time between science and social studies because we're only given 35 minutes um, Monday, Tuesday, and every other Friday. So we have about 19 days to teach all of the material. So we go in, we have that conversation. We're like, okay, well, we want these days. Oh, well, you can have those days. So we plan accordingly. So for the week that we need to plan for, we're out of school that Monday because it's MLK day. So then I need to plan for two days. I'm already a little bit shortened on time because of that day, that weekend that we're out for that three day. So we'll have to modify accordingly. From there, I put it into the spreadsheet. Whenever we do our uh, lesson community, so our PLCs, this is how our format is set up. I just get a head start on it. So we talk about the topic. It's going to be earth and science, which is investigating the weather. I put down key important information or key vocabulary that the kids will have to know, especially increase and decrease. That's hit very hard. And I put our TEKS, that is the specific vocabulary that is being asked of us, our active words, all that stuff. Then I go in and say what days you're actually teaching. Monday, we're not here. Tuesday, the students will be reviewing temperature by counting by twos. This is a skill that will be taught. Then they're gonna learn about the four different types of, oops, I did not mean to do that. Then they're gonna learn about the four different types of precipitation, which is rain, sleet, snow, and hail. And then students will take a quiz over precipitation. Then Friday, they will learn more about the different types of cloud coverage and then the weather symbols. And then lastly, over here, I link the slides that 
they, the teachers will have to use because we do a daily slides. Then I put their grades. So all of this is what the teachers will have to take a grade for. So this is just a very nice, easy way for us to kind of review back on what needs to be done. Okay, so once I figure out the general gist of what needs to be done, I look for resources that need to be applied to that. So I pull from other teachers, I pull from Teachers Pay Teachers, I pull from my website, my textbook that were provided. I pull from a lot. I was very lucky because I had a teacher who already had a lot done and prepared. So I just kind of pulled from there and tweaked based off of our schedule. So the kids will have their precipitation quiz on Tuesday. So that's what this document will look like. And then I don't know if we'll get to this. We're going to have to see because it's rain cloud in a jar and this is another gray. So I always put like little sticky notes too on it just so I can see what days everything is on. I think I am going to modify the schedule just a little bit because the students aren't tested necessarily on um, cloud coverage and there's a lot of questions on their test about uh, temperature. Sorry, there's teachers everywhere and yeah, I get nervous when people are looking at me. So we're gonna go back in and kind of modify it to make sure that I have enough time to teach everything because I don't have enough time. We don't have enough time, y'all. Not enough time. Okay, so now what I need to do is I have my copies made. I will take that to the front office so they can make my general master copies for me. I'll distribute them out next Wednesday is when we have our PLCs and we normally give each other copies then. I have copies coming up for this upcoming week that I'm going to put in my 10 tiered drawer. teach math and science so I'm departmentalized meaning I teach specific subjects so then my partner teacher she teaches ELR and social studies and we switch our homeroom classes so I have technically two classes the other teachers don't have that luxury they have all subjects and have just one class so I only teach math and science I don't have to worry about anything else so when I do my plans I have so we'll show next week's so I have my math and science sections and then as you can tell, the grades are the things that are highlighted. So I list out everything that we need to do. And then for math, we have all of our items to do. So what I do for math is not only am I provided the lesson plan that was sent to us, but I also go through and I look at our notes. So we get, normally we would have a binder, but we stopped doing binders just because they became very strenuous and they just were a hot mess express so we do packets we go in and like plan accordingly so we do certain things on certain days so like we start class with our basic facts basic facts is just simple addition and subtraction problems then we move into what i call tummy time where they can go onto the floor grab a clipboard and then just get out of their chair it's just another way to just get them still thinking, motivated, all that. So then we do problem solving, which is where we look at word problems, find our key information and all that stuff. And then we do this as a whole entire class. With the basic facts, I change it up. So sometimes they'll be given five minutes to complete as much as they can. Sometimes we'll do a challenge where the kids will have to take turns going up to the board and writing numbers and solving the problems. And we try to figure out who is the fastest class. Or I do, um, for our test, we have the basic facts. So our test would look like this. So on Thursdays, because I have students who do struggle with addition and subtraction, and I want to make sure I'm giving them enough time to adequately and successively, successfully solve it. So we have our basic facts that look like this. 
for our math class or for our test. So I normally do this part on Thursday and whatever they don't finish that day, they can do on Friday when we're taking the test. So basic facts is a big thing for us. Then we go over to skills, which is our third section. Skills is when we review any information that has already been taught. We're currently teaching or currently reviewing data in uh, pictographs or bar graphs. So we're looking at tables and answering questions based off of the information in the table. We get into the concepts for the day. With our weekly slides, we have more information provided on it to where the kids can get up, go up and solve problems, just be more energetic because let's be real, some of my kids, some of my kids will see this packet and they will automatically give up because it's a thick packet. And so I try to get them out of their seats as much as possible. So I try to differentiate what we do. Sometimes I make them do group work. Sometimes it's independent. Sometimes they'll go up to the board and answer it for. That's pretty much the gist of my lesson plan. It takes a lot of time and preparation to be able to do it. And the thing that I like about my district is we're given work day. So this week we had New Year's Day on Monday. Then we came back Tuesday and Wednesday, had teacher days. So we were in the classroom getting ready for it. We were looking at our lesson plans, getting a head start. And then we had the kids. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, we had teacher days. And then Thursday, Friday is when we actually were able to get the kids reviewed on our expectations, routines, all of that stuff. And then so the upcoming Monday, we start concept. So I really like how my district does that because they do allow us the time in the classrooms just trying to get stuff prepared. So it's more than what a lot of people think, but if you're a teacher, you're like, get it, like you get it, I got it, we're on the same wavelength. So I really hope that this opened up your mind about like what it truly is that we need to do as educators. And then if you are an educator and if I said something that you're like, wow, like that's pretty cool. Yay, I really hope that this video just brought awareness to what teachers truly do than just teaching. Like there's so much more that goes into it and I just hope this either helped you or this was an eye opener. But if y'all like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want more teacher content, please let me know. Like I love sharing tips and tricks for my teachers out there. So if there's something specific you would like to see, comment down below so I can try to get a video out for you. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join our little family. But I love y'all so much and I can't wait for our next adventure. Bye guys.